So I primarily grew up thinking of myself as First Nations. Uh, the reserve there is quite small, about uh, 500 people when I was growing up. But I, I think anyone who grows up in a place where you have very firm roots, and uh, we have archaeological evidence uh, that we've been there for 8,000 years, and you know, you could say that we've been there for 16,000, maybe even longer. That's a long time. That's, uh, you know, before the Great Pyramids were built, we've been there. So I think like most people, I heard stories about my family, f primarily from my elders who were close to me. And then as I got a lot older and started to meet more of my family members, I would hear from more distant family members, distant cousins, and their stories would be a bit different. They would clash a little bit and you'd think, oh, I wonder, I wonder what the truth of that is. Uh, my father gr growing up without his mother, his mother was about 15 when she had him and then she died right away from TB. That kind of taught me that people have an importance in their life no matter how brief it is. Uh, it's really sad. Sorry. My father's never seen his mother. My father has no evidence of his mother's life. Like not a, not a scrap of material, not a photograph, not a a piece of paper that said uh, she ever lived. It, she's, she's an idea. And so um, <laughs> that would be amazing. I think, you know, he's still alive. My dad's still alive. He, he, uh, he would love to see her or to, uh, you know, find evidence for her. So as a First Nations person who then worked as an actor who told all kinds of stories and then as a doctor who was witness to all kinds of often you know, really sad uh, stories. I feel like I have uh, a very strong desire for the truth. Uh, we, we shouldn't tell things that are so sweet that they can't possibly be true. Uh, so come what may in my family tree, I, I want to hear it and, uh, and I welcome it. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Genevieve. I'm the archivist on duty. Hi, Genevieve. I'm Evan. Welcome to the archives. We'll use an example from your family of Albert Wilson. His name Wilson. Albert Wilson, my mother's father. Yes. So we'll put in the year down here, if you just put in 1951 in there. Thanks. So if you click on search. This is cool. <laughs> So our search has come up with two uh, options. Do you recognize either of those? Do they look like your relatives? Yes, the second one. That, Perfect. And that's him, Redonda Bay. That's Church House. Or Homalco, that's his home reserve. We deserve to see the foundations of our province and our country. And I, and I know my family was there. I know it was probably in an unexpected way, having a Chilean marry into a First Nations family. Uh, me being of mixed descent and not pure blood or uh, some other illusion of what a British Columbian or a Canadian is. I, I, I think we all deserve to hear the truth of the formation of, of our families. How did we mix? How did we marry? How did we move forward? I, I think more of us could spend more time thinking about uh, those people whose shoulders we stand on, uh, those people who, uh, at great cost to themselves, had us. We should, uh, we should look back at them. That's Rosie Adams. And who's Rosie Adams? That's, that's my father's mother. This is the, this is the um, only evidence I have um, of her, and it was, uh, it's kind of virtual, it's like a it's not even a piece of paper to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, my father's mother, it says she's single. It gives a, a death date, January 1938. My father was born in October of 36, so I guess he's, he would have been about 15 months old right. uh, when, when she died.
Ah, so this is page two of her... And it does say pulmonary tuberculosis. And there's, yes. Yes, she died from, uh, she died from TB, which is almost always in the lungs. And uh, it's a very wasting disease. So I, I heard that she was very skinny, and my father was very skinny because uh, she had TB when, when she was pregnant with him. You know, this is, th this is such a, a, a wonder. I, I, well, just to see her name, uh, it's, her, it's her English name, Rosie Adams, T to see when she actually died, because no one could even remember. My dad thought, thought, he was guessing, of course, he was just a baby when she died. He said maybe she was, maybe he was three months old, maybe she was 14, but here it says she's 16 confirming that she had TB, that my father's whole life was uh, about surviving TB and, and surviving his mother, the fact that he was so frail and his family was so threatened by, you know, her death and his precarious health. And, and to see that actually in, on paper, not just being a, 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 a vague memory of my father's, that's really, I wish my father was here and he could see this. It's really something. So another example of media that we have here at the archives is we have audio and visual records. I thought we'd have a quick look at a video that was taken, it covers most of BC, but the clip that I've set up shows the Kokolitsa um, Hospital, which was where a lot of First Nations people went to be treated for tuberculosis and other things, and at least one of your ancestors uh, was treated there. I'm just searching every face and looking <laughs> for familiarity. These are government records. Uh, this particular one is related to Hamalco. Oh, wonderful. My mother's community. Th these are important to have because I, I think a, a lot of um, modern peoples don't realize what a process it was to mm -hmm. put First Nations people um, on reserves and to move them from, you know, wherever they were within their traditional territory mm -hmm. um, to, to places where they, you know, where they are now. Yeah. We, we haven't always been on reserves. Right. Um, exactly. That's a kind of a relatively recent thing. His, his eyes are closed, and I was told he didn't open his eyes. Of course, right. he was blind. Why would he? You right. know, why would it matter if his eyes were open or closed? And and here's a picture of of him, and I've never, um, you know, I, I'd never seen him before, and n neither had any of my family. Right. Uh, he died in 1932, well before my father was born, um, and uh, I hear that. Um, my grandmother, my dad's grandmother, would never speak of him because uh, um, she she said he was a bad man. I guess I guess because he was dementing, he was right. saying saying things. And it, and if you and if if I remember correctly, um, Essendale Riverview, this mental hospital, they they said that he was having like delusions. Oh, okay. In his senile his senile dementia, yeah. in his senility. So I have here a map from 1860, it was revised slightly in 1864. One thing that I really liked about this particular map is that it actually lists Lyamon as a village site there. Oh yes. And I thought you might want to use that. What's the year again? 1864 was when this was um, edited. Are you serious? And Powell River doesn't even exist yet. No, it was founded so. in 1910. Uh, so, oh my gosh, that's amazing. In Homalco, the village where my mother was born. And this whole area, Desolation Sound, is an unbelievable waterway. Just so beautiful. You have to go up there on a boat if you're a British Columbian. Everything you look at is so evocative of feelings and memories and history. You know, it's complicated. So. I, I feel overwhelmed, I, I feel happy beyond belief. 
I feel grateful that uh, someone would help me look back. Because I think a look back is kind of like magic. I think everyone should come to this archive and, and seek out what they can see about their families' stories. Not, not just histories, their, their stories, their realities. Uh, today wasn't just about looking at archival material, it was about, um, it wasn't just about loss or death, it was, uh, it was a celebration of people's lives. I felt like I met living people. I'm happy that the archives can help all of us uh, remember. <laughs>